I think we're live. <laughs> hey, players, welcome to another live stream here on my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh. Every single week, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. In this live stream, I'm gonna be answering your dating questions live. I've been doing a few of these for the last few weeks, and I really, really enjoy them. I enjoy taking your guys' questions, talking about things that are on your mind, just kind of giving you on-the-spot practical advice, and I hope that I can give you more of that in this uh, live stream here today. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this video, but I wanna give shout outs to all the early birds in the chat. Those are the people that are jumping in right from the get go. Um, the name should be popping up in just a second here, but I'm super excited to jump into your questions. If you're someone that's joining for the very first time or you're a regular here, make sure to jump in and uh, you know say hi and uh, you guys will get your due shout out. We'll see if this chat pops up in a second or so. Uh, let's see who we got in here. Hamish K, good to have you, Hamish. Rage Mash is in here. Everglow, Jalen as well. Uh, Zachy is in here. JZB09, Anthony Perez. Oh, there it now it's popping up. Alexander Cole, Dono the Gamer, good to have you, Dono. Uh, Kickout is in here. Woody Hamilton, Dark Tar Gaming, Mohammed, Mohammed Belsine. Uh, Connor the Man plays Leo the Beast. What is up, Leo? Good to have you, man. Young Ruse, Stuart Douglas. Hey, how's it going, Stuart? Cheesy's in here. Yo, what's up, Cheesy? Send It is in here. Uh, let's see. Nolani to Toby is in here. Rage Master, Sunday Sam, Everglow 101. Good to have you back, Everglow. <clears throat> Azim the Dream, my man Azim the Dream, it says, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. <laughs> Good to have you, Azim. Uh, let's see, Christian Barron's in here. Uh, Anthony Prez jumping right into the Super Chat. I'll just jump right into Super Chat. David, David Eo Studio, good to have you, man. Uh, Alex Burns, what is up? Let's jump right into David Eo's, uh, not David Eo, let's jump right into Anthony Perez's Super Chat. Anthony asking a question right off the bat. Should pop up in a second or so. There we go. Anthony said, what's the best place to go on a date even during the pandemic just to be safe? That's a really, really good question, Anthony. Let me jump right into that. So during this pandemic, it's difficult to go out. You know, like restaurants are kind of half open, movie theaters, you know, like indoor places is still kind of sketchy. You don't know what's open. You don't know what's safe. So the best thing you can do for dates during the pandemic is basically anything that's outside. This is something I would recommend anyway, right? Even if it wasn't pandemic times, I still think an outside date is a good date, especially now that we're heading into the summer, you know, going to a park, going for a walk near a, a, a beach or water, going somewhere where it's nice and sunny and quiet or birds are chirping, anywhere that's kind of nice and quiet during the day gives you a real opportunity to explore the outdoors, to, to enjoy nature as is today's Earth Day, so enjoy nature as is, and it gives you an opportunity to just relax with someone and to talk to them, right? Plus, it's a very, very, um, it's a very, very kind of low commitment, low tier date. Right. So saying to someone, hey, it's going to be really nice on Saturday. I was going to go head to the park. You want to come join me? Right. Maybe we can play Frisbee. Maybe we can have a picnic. Maybe we can just go watch the birds or something or go feed the birds. That's a very, very low commitment uh, type of plan where it's like if the person is like, I don't know, I'm not sure you could still go do it yourself. So you're kind of inviting them to join you into your world. And I think that's a key piece. Plus, if you go to the park, you could probably social distance You're outside. You can kind of feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, and if you have if you have a picnic with someone, you know, you guys, if you don't want to get too close, you can sit a little bit further apart on a picnic uh, uh, blanket or something like that. But just kind of being outdoors, I think, is the best thing. Exploring parks, kind of going for a walk. If there's a certain area that you like to kind of check out, maybe it's a creek. Maybe it's an area where there's lots of rocks or hills or mountains or something. Take the person there. Just do things that are outdoors. I think that's going to be a, a good option and a safe option where they feel comfortable doing that. Hey, Miss, thank you. And thank you, Anthony, for the $5 super chat. If you have a follow-up question, type it in the chat. I'll try to get to it. Uh, Hamish says, yes, I'm on time. Feels good. Oh, yeah. Good to have you on time, Hamish. Um, good to have all of you guys in here. So I do want to jump in and say to all the early birds, welcome, guys. Good to have you in here. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this video. And I also want to say, as Anthony and Hamish have jumped in, if you have a birding question, something that is on your mind that you just need to get my answer for right here, right now, while you're watching live, make sure to use the super chat function, right? 
I treat super chats like burning questions. I'll stop what I'm talking about. I'll jump right into your question. It's the best way to get a direct answer from me right now. You can donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is that you want. It'll put it front and center in front of me. I will. You'll hear that fire fireball come by, and I will stop what I'm doing and answer your question. So use the super chat function if you want. Otherwise, I'll be jumping into the main chat answering questions. Let's jump in and answer some regular questions here. See what you guys are saying. Um, Alexander Cole says social distance is so dumb and it's BS. I hear you on that, Alexander Cole. It's annoying. Uh, it's annoying to have to social distance. It's annoying to kind of have to be cautious and stuff, but it's the safest thing that we can do until more people are vaccinated, until we kind of are in a place where we can be a little bit more comfortable on each other. Uh, but we're not there yet. So we're getting there. That's the key piece. All right, let's see. Anthony Cole said, Anthony Cole, sorry, Anthony Quentel says, um, Team says, why does it seem like 99% girls get the guy they want? That's a really, really good question. If girls did, yeah, and, um, Azim, this is a second. This thing lags so much. Uh, anyway, um, that's a really, really good question, Azim. And I'll jump into it and say this, that um, there's a lot of studies and research that show that men and women approach generally, these are very general ideas, they approach for different uh, different reasons, right? So the initial qualities that they may look for in a partner differ, right? For men, it seems to be more this kind of general abstract attractiveness. Does the girl look attractive? Is she, you know, how, whatever the attractiveness appears to him. For women, there's a lot more subtle things like, does the man show that he takes care of himself? Does he have a level of confidence to him? Does he look attractive? Does he look put together like he cares about himself? So there are different qualities that stand out. This is more on the average side of things uh, for men and women that they're looking for. But to your point, um, it may seem like 99% of the guys don't get the girls that they're going for because typically in our society, men are the ones that generally approach women. So because more men are approaching women in terms of dating scenarios, there's going to be a higher likelihood of failure there because less women are, are, are pursuing men. You're probably not going to notice those numbers as, you know, as, as, as sharp as you would with men. Um, there are kind of ideas. The stream is laggy. Why is the stream laggy? Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can fix it here. Um, it should come back. If you guys can hear me, it should come back. The, the stream should stop lagging in just a minute or so. Let me see if um take everything off the Wi-Fi that I have on the Wi-Fi right now, maybe. Um, I'm sorry that the stream is lag. It left on a cliffhanger. I know, right? Oh, my God. Why does it keep lagging so much? All right, it should be coming back now. I don't know what happened there. I got to call Optima, man. I get that fixed. We'll see if it um the lag starts to get better. It's like it's streaming normal here on this side now. It's waiting for YouTube to catch up now. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Don't know why. Don't know why. Lagging is bad. Yeah, so the lagging, I guess the lagging is still bad. Why does it still say poor? Poor connection. It's a weird one. I know. I should, all right, now I think it's back. I, I don't know what, what happened there, but it should be coming back now. see hopefully hopefully it's better now okay yeah sorry about that i don't know what happened it was just a drop i really gotta like talk to optimum and get this kind of fixed we're back here but going back to azim's point there um i just want to jump in and say that so <clears throat> i think what happens is uh that 
men on average will pursue women more. So it, you'll tend to notice more when they fail because there's more um, there's more kind of pursuit there. Right. So there's higher higher number to work with. But I think ultimately what you see is that um, it may feel like women don't get rejected as much or, you know, like oh, women won't get rejected. That's the idea that we have. And the truth is, it's that. If you look at kind of the scale of women do women do get rejected and stuff just like guys get rejected. It just it may not be as noticeable because typically in our society, women aren't always the first ones to initiate asking someone out. A lot of times they'll do it through more subtle measures and sometimes it'll be more creating a scenario where they want the guy to pursue them or the guy to ask them out. So that's where the perception comes from. Ultimately, though, I think it's important to not get too focused or too hung up on, well, women will always get a guy if they pursue him, whereas guys will struggle. Because we're, what we're doing is we're kind of getting sucked into this generality that serves us as an individual no purpose. What really serves us is asking ourselves, what can I do for myself in situations that I want to pursue someone? Whether or not someone else has it easy or hard isn't reflective of my experience and what I'm going to try to do right now. So that's where I think the focus should ultimately be. Um, try not to focus too much on who has it easier, who has it harder. Try to focus on what you're capable of doing. I think that's where you're going to find the most strength. But thank you guys for sticking with me through the weird lag drop there. But um, I hope that was helpful, Azim. I hope you enjoyed the, the answer to that question. Let's jump in and answer some more here. Let's see what we got. All right. Um, Carter Gordon says, why am I still nervous even when I watch your videos and I'm confident then, but whenever I see my crush, I get nervous, freeze up, and I don't know what to say. What can I do to not overthink? That's a good, good question, Carter. Here's what I would suggest. I look watching videos and learning technique is one step of the process. The second step really is putting those things into practice, right? It's very easy to consume information this is what I always tell people. It's like, if you watch my videos, try to take one small thing, one small step you can take to put into practice, right? So if you freeze up around your crush, if you feel like I can't approach them or I can't talk to them, take one small step of something I said, right? That small step might be, let me focus on saying hi to them when I see them in class or I pass them in the hallway. Like that's the small step I'm gonna really, really work on mastering and just work on that little step. I think a lot of times you, you may watch one of my videos or someone watches one of my videos and they think, okay, jo Josh laid out this, 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 and this, and then boom, you ask out your crush. But you may not be ready for all those middle steps. It may take time to get there. So you definitely wanna find one small thing that you can do and work on that little by little. I think that's gonna help you get more comfortable. Another piece to that is if you have a main crush, think about it like this. I always look at it like this. Like if you're, let's say you are playing, um, let's say you're playing Pokemon, right? And you wanna fight Elite Four. Well, you're not gonna go fight Elite Four with your level three Caterpie, right? You know, like you start the game, you catch a Caterpie, you catch a Rat Rattata, you know, you got your, your starter Pokemon. You have to train those Pokemon and you have to catch new Pokemon and you have to defeat other gym leaders and you have to just get better as a trainer to the point where you're ready to fight Elite Four. I think approaching kind of your main crush or someone that you're intimidated by or nervous around is kind of like that. Practice having conversations with other people, practice flirting with other people online, practice asking other people to hang out, get into the habit where those type of behaviors and actions are normal for you with to the point where you're like yeah i ask up people to hang out all the time yeah i flirt with girls all the time yeah i talk to girls that i'm interested in all the time and then once you get into the habit of doing that more regularly when it comes to talking to your main crush you're going to feel so much more ready and prepared because you've done it enough times you're ready to fight elite four Let's see. Fun fact about Pokemon, by the way, guys, um, back in the day before the Internet and uh, kind of made, you know, the Internet kind of exposed what the reality was, you know, people would just kind of pass Pokemon tips. Hey, did you know that there's a secret Mew in this in this level or something like that? Uh, I, I was under the belief when I used to play Pokemon Silver, I was under the belief that if you fought Elite Four 100 times, Professor Oak would come out and go, whew, you've done this so many times. Let me take you to the to the, to the the next level of Pokemon where you can then capture the Poke Gods. This is what my friends told me. So I had a little, um, I had a little post-it note attached to the back of my Game Boy, and I literally would mark down every single time I fought Elite Four until I got to 100. And then once I finally beat them the hundredth time, nothing happened. And I'm like, why would my friend make this up? That doesn't seem right. Everyone's saying it's true. So yeah, don't believe everything you hear on the internet. <laughs> okay, let's jump into some more questions. Um, Leo says, hey, Josh, not trying to sound rude, but can you check my Discord message later? Yeah, Leo, I'll try to get to your message uh, later. I get a lot of DMs, so it's difficult to try to answer everyone, but I'll try to, try to check it out and see what you say. 
Um, Dave Video says, yeah, I tried the tips from Nerd Love and Josh, of course, on a date before lockdown and advice in a work. That's awesome, Dave Video. I'm curious, what, were you, what, were your, what was your experience like on that date? What were some of the things you said or did that you felt worked in your favor? Yeah, Carter, that's the idea. You're, you're in the process of training right now to feel more comfortable talking to your crush. That's how I look at it. Let's see. Uh, Walmart says, what do I do if he texts me saying, I love you? I have no idea how to respond, and I ended up saying K, LOL. So Walmart, that's a really, really good point. And to, to, any, to anyone watching this who's thinking about sending something like that to their crush, look at Walmart's answer as a good example, right? Sometimes when you kind of lay on your feelings so thick, the other person just doesn't know how to respond to it. It's a little too much. It becomes overwhelming. Now, if you're someone that is saying that to your crush, try to like, you don't just drop that. You you have to kind of really build to that. And you build to that by really hanging out with them, getting to know them, building a relationship. And then you can drop the I love you if you feel like you're at that stage. But if you're in Walmart's position right now where you're on the receiving end of a comment like that, well, I think the way to respond to that is to be truthful, right? Sometimes we want to kind of dismiss it and we don't know what to say. Uh, I think one way to kind of address it is to say, Hey, thank you for being honest with me. I don't know if I feel that exact same way, um, but I am interested in getting to know you. If you're interested in getting to know them. If you're not, then you may want to say, hey, thank you for sharing how you feel. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you, you feel that way, but I don't exactly feel the same way or I only view you as a friend. Add in that honesty. Let them see that um, you recognize that it takes a lot of courage to tell someone that you love them, right? But you don't feel the same way. You're not saying it to hurt their feelings and you're not saying it to be mean. You're just being honest. And that's the best thing you can do. You're not a bad person if you don't like them or if you reject them or you don't accept their feelings. That's just how you feel. Hamish, thank you so much for the five pound super chat. Hamish said, I still have a Game Boy Color that still works. I play Pokemon on that and Pokemon Heart and Gold on DS. Awesome, dude. Yeah, man. I grew up around the red and blue era, so that was kind of my, you know, I started with Pokemon there. I was always Pokemon Blue, and then I went to Pokemon Silver. Pokemon Silver was one of my favorites, uh, but then I didn't really play the other ones. I played Pokemon Pinball, I played Pokemon Snap, um, Pokemon Stadium for Nintendo 64, but yeah, then I kind of fell off the Pokemon wagon. I was just, it was, I, it was too much grinding, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I gotta get a, a Game Boy Advance, and then a Nintendo DS, and all those things. But yeah, Hamish, that's cool, man. That's awesome to hear. I hope you enjoyed Heart Gold. But thank you for the $5 Super Chat, man. All right, let's see what else you guys got. Uh, let's see. JJ Plays says, um, Hey, Josh, I wanted to ask you about how do I approach my crush without making me look like a threat or patronizingly scary to her? That's a really, really good question, JJ. A lot of times when a person comes off as intimidating to someone else, uh, it's usually because there isn't a groundwork laid there for them to, one, know a little bit about you and know who you are to know, hey, he's a pretty cool person. And two, um, you may be kind of interacting with them without um, creating a, a, a welcoming presence. And I'll tell you how to do both of those things. So, so for the first point in allowing them to learn more about you, Ask yourself this, well, does your crush follow you on social media? Uh, do you post things online that kind of showcase your life? Do you um, have a regular group of friends that they can observe you with? Do they see you interacting with other people? Basically, when they observe you, do they see that you're just a person who's living life, interacting with people, you have hobbies and interests? Can they observe those things about you, right? And then the second piece is, if you are going to interact with them and they don't really know you, the best way to do that is in a more uh, open group setting. So that might be if you guys have mutual friends, kind of talking when the mutual friend is there. If it, if you guys, um, you know, like if you know, if you, um, if you, if you're on like an online group chat or you guys are on a Discord together, communicating in there, doing things in a group setting first. It's really hot in this room. Doing things in a group setting first and then transitioning to a private one-on-one -on -one setting. If they've already gotten the ability to kind of learn more about you and to learn who you are, that's going to help. And if they see you interact with people around them that they know, that's going to help as well. So those two factors are going to allow them to feel more comfortable around you. And I think that's the approach you should definitely, definitely focus on, on avoiding looking like a creep. I think that's going to be helpful. Let's see. Hamish says, Pokemon Go, can't go a day without that. Oh, yeah, of course. I play Pokemon Go every day. I forgot about that. Uh, by the way, if any of you guys are on Pokemon Go, make sure to add me as a friend. 
I, I'll put my friend code up. I'll, in fact, I'll post my friend code on like Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it there. Uh, let's see. Living in 2021 says, hey, Josh, I finally had the courage to, t- to talk to that asexual punk girl I've been talking about. Surprisingly, she's really mature and super nice. She followed me back when I told her why I messaged her. That's awesome, man. Yeah, dude, I'm proud of you. You know, it's it's scary sometimes the idea of approaching someone that you like and that you want to get to know and talking to them. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So I, I get where you're coming from. And I think that now that you've communicated with her, you're going to start to realize that maybe it's easier now to talk to her. This is the thing too, guys, that initial interaction is always the scariest. Once you get over that hump of just talking to someone for the first time, it becomes easier to talk to them after because now you've already broken the ice. That's what the whole purpose of icebreakers are. You want to kind of break that initial fear and show yourself that, okay, I talked to them. I didn't die, (laughs) you know, like... Everything's going to be okay. That's the kind of energy you want to bring into that equation. Let's see what else you guys are saying in here. Um, Alexander Cole says, I have a question. What should I do if a young girl likes me? That's a really, really good question, Alexander Cole. If you notice that someone a lot younger than you that's out of your dating range likes you or has a crush on you, the best thing that you can do is, well, there's two things, right? The first thing you can do is to try to really establish with them and let them know that the idea of pursuing anything romantic or having any kind of romantic conversations is off the table. That's not going to happen. And the way that you do that is to really, really speak to them and establish, I really value your friendship. Um, you know, like I, I value the fact that we're friends and I would always love to keep that at, keep our, our, our connection as friends really, really establish that first and foremost, because here's the thing, when someone's younger than you and they have a crush on you, they, their minds are probably going to think of a million scenarios. We'll get married. We'll have kids. You know, they're, they're going to keep wandering. But if you really establish that, hey, I only see you as a friend and I can, and we will only always be friends, I think it helps create a little bit more of that realistic interpretation of your communication with them. Uh, that's going to set the framework. And two, try your best to um, involve them with other people their age if you can, right? So like if it's, a, if it's a, someone that's younger than you, and let's say they have other friends that are their age or you, you, you know other people their age, try to introduce them. Try to segue and, and allow that person to start to develop other relationships with people that are their own age. A lot of times what happens is um, when, when a person who's younger has a crush on you, they tend to only see just like you and them in their world. So by introducing more people into the equation, it gives them the opportunity to kind of shift that crush to someone else that's probably more appropriate for them to date. That would be my advice there. Let's jump into what the rest of you guys are saying in here. Azim says, uh, when having a friendly conversation with girls, why do they put up their guard as soon as you transition to even a little bit of flirting? Azim, that's a really, really good question. So you might notice that you're having a casual conversation and the moment you flirt, girls may put up their guard there. A, a lot of times I think that, um, hmm, let me think how I want to really address that. I would think that if a girl is putting up her guard when you start flirting, she knows that she's now in a position. She knows she's now in a position where if things don't go well, she has to kind of put the brakes on it and reject you. So now there's a new obstacle that's presented that she has to address. If you're just casually talking to her at any point, she could just be like, okay, well, it's nice meeting you. See you later. Bye. But now that she knows that you may have an interest in her, she has to step forward and kind of be like, hey, I don't like you. I have a boyfriend. I only see you as a friend. I'm not interested. She's going to have to say that. And sometimes saying that can be uncomfortable, right? So I think the reason why you might notice a girl's guard go up is because there's a level maybe of discomfort in having to say I'm not interested if they're not interested. Um, And look, a lot of women are somewhat fearful of that, right? Like, There's this fear maybe that I don't like I don't want the person to think I'm rude. There's this fear that if I say something wrong, are they going to be angry with me? So that's a real fear that I think people might have when it comes to rejecting someone. So I think taking that into account and having the awareness of that, that, hey, you know what? Um, This person's putting their guard up is not uh, to show that they dislike me at all. It could just be that maybe they are being protective of themselves in case they encounter a situation that might not work out well for them you know so there's just an awareness i think that's there it's almost kind of like um if you're a boss 
and not exactly, but let's say you're a boss and you have to fire someone, you know, like you get that pain in your stomach of like, I hope this person can be, I hope this person's going to be a bit understanding. I hope this person's not going to uh, yell or fight or scream or do something drastic. Like you recognize that you're putting yourself in an uncomfortable position or you're now in an uncomfortable position and you, all you want to do is try to navigate it the best way that you can. And I think the best thing that you can do as a guy in that perspective is to be aware of that, be aware of, okay, this person's guard is up. I recognize that. It's not, it's not a slight against me as an in, a person. It's just a general idea. I understand. And then if they're not interested, take that cue and, and move on. You know, don't pressure a person to make them feel more uncomfortable if, if, if you don't, and not that you don't have to, but just try not to really. Um, but that, that'd be my piece of advice there. Hey, Arian Kapoor, no, no need to spam. Post your, your comment once and I'll try to get to it. If I don't, you can always use the super chat function. That'll put it front and center and I'll answer that question there. Let's jump in and see what the rest, some, some more questions in here. Uh, Caden Yates says, hey, Josh, what do you think I should do if I had a couple of bad interactions with someone but still want to date them? That's a really, really good question, too. You guys are just on fire with these questions. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. OK, um, let's let's jump into that. You had a few bad interactions, but you still want to date this person. How do you make that work? What can you do here? That's, you know, I think ultimately what you're going to kind of need, like you can never have a full reset, right? You're never really going to get to a point maybe where all the bad interactions of the past are just going to disappear. All you can really do is provide more positive interactions that maybe allow them to put the bad ones in perspective. And that perspective may be, okay, this person has kind of grown from that situation. They, they act a little bit differently. They're a little bit more mindful, a little bit more aware this time around. I can communicate with them um, and it's not going to be like last time. And the way that you do that is by to start really working on the way that you interact with them, how you communicate with them, when you talk to them, how often you talk to them. So I think the best thing you can do is to kind of if you feel like the bad interactions have created an uncomfortable scenario, try to take a step back and focus on just casual interactions with them if you can. If that means if that means when you see them around, wave to them and say hi and leave it at that. If that means um, you're around their friends, get to know their friends better. Talk to their friends casually. Speak to them and get to, you know, like let the friends see that. Oh, he's a pretty cool guy. You know, I talk to him. He's pretty normal. Because that message will translate back to your crush. Do those little steps and then that's going to start to now create a scenario where your crush can kind of say, okay, what happened in the past, you know, it was not cool, um, but hopefully we can move past it. Hopefully, um, hopefully I understand he's grown as a person. That's kind of the direction you want to take. All right, let's jump in and answer some more. Did you make it in time? Yes, you did make it in time. Let's take a sip of water. What break? Okay, let's answer some more questions. Let's see, Lorenzo Calderon says, Hi Josh, recently my ex's friends has caught my eye and we've only talked uh, whenever we were around my ex. I want to talk to her without making it awkward. Whew, this, is, this is a good one. Okay, you want to talk to your, your ex's friend without making it awkward around your, uh, with, without, you know, getting in trouble with your ex there. I think ultimately... The people that need to be on the same page are you and your ex's friend. Your ex may not ultimately be comfortable with the idea. They may not like it. They may get jealous. They may get upset. But if your ex and your ex's friend can communicate together that, hey, I like him. I want to get to know him better. That's more so for them to kind of work through together as friends. Um, I think what you can do in that situation is. Um, if you still talk to your ex, let your ex know that you see them as a friend and you value your friendship with them. And that's that's kind of where you guys stand now. Um, and I think ultimately, if you feel comfortable to talk to them about their friend, maybe bring it up. Ultimately, though, I think it might be easier if your ex's friend is the one that does the talking because their friendship is really what they're going to have to kind of make sure makes it through if you guys decide to date if you know like you decide to date their friend it's not going to affect you and your ex's relationship because you guys are broken up so speak to your ex's friend let them know hey listen i like you i want to get to know you better but i don't want to be rude to so and so you know like i want to know that you guys are cool if we decide to pursue anything like kind of put that up front up front and let them know that so that they can have that conversation 
Now let's jump into some more. Chase Angus says, Hi, Josh. I'm 15 years old in high school, and I've been talking to this girl for about an hour uh, at lunch, one-on-one every day. That's awesome. She is kind of, she is kind of shy, but I think she likes me now. How can I escalate our friendship to more? Really, really good question. So you've been talking to her every day. You guys are getting to know each other better. That's awesome. That's a really, really good step. Um, but you want to kind of escalate it now. Well, if you're talking to her in school, I think one natural way to escalate it is now to kind of get her contact info on Instagram or Snapchat or somewhere where you can talk to her outside of school. Now, you probably already do that. If you guys are talking every day, you're probably already talking online as well. So I think to escalate it even further now, if you guys are texting back and forth, try to ask her to jump on a video call one day. Tell her a really fun story. Say, hey, it's too much to type out. Do you have, you have five minutes to jump on a video chat? Jump on a video chat with her and then get her comfortable with having those face-to-face type of outside of school interactions with you. Then what you can do is after you start to learn more about her and really find something you guys have in common, once you know that something you have in common, try to think about how you can translate that into a real world thing. So one example might be, let's say you guys really both love Marvel movies, right? Um, uh, You might want to say... Hey, you know, uh, whatever the next Marvel movie that's coming out in theaters is that I don't know what it is. I forgot. But let's say the next Marvel movie that's coming out, you might want to say, oh, this movie's coming out. Do you want to go check it out with me? I know you're a fan, too. Now you've found something you guys have in common. You've already communicated with them over and over. And you're just doing the next simple transition step, which is we have this in common. We're probably both going to enjoy this. Let's do this thing together. Find that thing that you guys have in common that you can do outside, even if it's something as simple as, hey, this is really cool um, park. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Looks like it's back to full quality on my end here. I'm just waiting for YouTube now to pick up that full quality. All right. I think we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Man, YouTube is really dropping the ball today. Okay. Um, Back in action here. So what I was saying was um, if you guys... Um, want to send me a private message just to get my quick opinion on something. Hey, Josh, I need your help with this. Hey, Josh, what do you think about this? Shoot me a text. That's my texting number, 1718-400-7129. I try to check my text messages every single day. I know a lot of you guys might DM me on Instagram or send me a message on Discord, and I may not always get to those in time, but if you text me, I'll try to get to that pretty much every single day. I try to answer people there. So check it out, guys. Uh, Add me on there if you can. And I also want to say... Um, if you want to talk to me one-on-one through video chat. So some of you guys I meet with every single month and we jump on Patreon. We have our own Patreon calls and pretty much in those calls, we meet once a month. We talk about what's going on in your life. I have a Patreon call scheduled for tomorrow morning. I have a community group hangout video call scheduled for Friday. Um, I meet with you guys all throughout the month, which is really, really cool. If you wanted to talk to me one-on-one and get confidence coaching, you want me to help you work on building your confidence by giving you practical and exact tips that fit your specific situation, become a member over on Patreon. There's different tier levels there for everyone. Um, so you know, if you want to talk to me once a month for 30 minutes, if you want to talk to me once a week for an hour, you could do that too. Check it out, guys. Just go to patreon.com slash the Josh speaks. That's going to be another good opportunity to connect with me. Um, and one last thing I want to shout out here and share with you guys is our group channel, our group discord here, our group discord. Some of you know what discord is. Most of you do, but for those that don't, Discord is an online chatting platform. It's a great place to kind of create, build a community. There's lots and lots of different channels on there. We have a a channel dedicated to dating, a channel dedicated to school, to LGBTQ, to sports, to art, to music. So you can jump on there and you can talk to people about those topics and different things like that. It's just a really, really great place to make friends. If you're working on being your best self, if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably are. Um, It's a great way to kind of share your journey with others and to meet other people that are like minded that are also working on being their best selves. We're get, we're on the tip there getting so close to getting to 800 members. So I'd love to have you on there. I'd love to see who the 800th member is. That'd be super, super cool. Um, but yeah, guys, it's just a great place. I would highly, highly recommend checking it out. Uh, yeah, the subreddit too, man. Oh man, the subreddit. We still got to jump in. I still got to jump in and, 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 and fix it up. Yeah, guys, we also have a subreddit over there. Um, you can go to the joshpeaks.com slash reddit. 
It's still a work in progress, but if you want to share long form stories about what's going on, you want to ask questions, um, I would highly recommend adding it onto the Reddit there. I think that's going to be the best place to, to, to do it, guys. Thejoshspeaks.com slash Reddit. Check it out. Okay, cool. Let's get into some more questions here. Um, uh, if you have a question that's a burning question you need to ask me, hit the super chat button and you can send that along. Hit the thumbs up also if you haven't already on this stream. Okay, let's get into some more. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, reading through. Lewis says, hi, Josh. I got rejected by a girl about a month ago, and now she thinks she might be attracted to me. I'm not sure if I'm ready for a relationship, but I feel like she's very pretty. What should I do? Interesting, interesting. So, um... So this was a girl that you pursued and now she likes you back. So what do you do? Well, I think now, oh my God, the lag again. Why does it keep lagging? Why does it keep lagging? Okay, looks like it's back. Ay ay ay. Okay. I will do my best to get this fixed by next week. Not cool YouTube, not cool. What's my favorite show on Netflix? I don't know if you guys can still hear me even though there's lag. My favorite show on Netflix. Oh man, that's tough. Um well, there's a lot of shows that I like that are on Netflix. I don't know if I I don't know if I could pick out any like Netflix exclusives. I love Breaking Bad. I love Walking Dead. I love a lot of the Marvel uh, Netflix shows that were there. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Those are probably my favorite on Netflix. I don't really watch Netflix. I, I mainly my wife watches them. I just watch it with her, whatever she's watching on there. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, here on OBS, it shows that it's gr in the green full quality, but I'm still waiting for YouTube to come back full quality. Yeah, I mean, maybe I will jump on and try YouTube and Twitch simo stream, simultaneous stream here, but um, I got to get my internet fixed and working 100%. Right now, the problem is I'm running on the Wi-Fi. I don't have a hard connection because I'm upstairs. I got to figure that out. I got to figure out how I can get a hardwire connection. Because that'll make it so much easier to do a million things. Um, the thing with Instagram, it's I don't run I don't run on the Wi-Fi on Instagram. So okay, we're looks like it's back on the YouTube side. Jeez Louise, man, killing the flow of the stream here, YouTube. You're killing the flow. Okay, let's jump back in and, and answer some more questions here, guys. Let's see, Josiah Gaudet says, Josh, I got stood up on a date by a girl uh, uh, a month ago. I want to know if I can start dating other girls again. Is it time to start showing interest in other girls? That's a good question. So you got stood up on a date by a girl and you want to know if, start, you, want to know if you could start dating other girls? Absolutely, man. I think you totally, totally can. I think that here's the thing. It's like getting rejected sucks, right? You know this. We all know this. It's, it's not a fun experience by any means. However... I think ultimately the takeaway we can get from our, the rejections we experience is that um, the rejection that we can get, the, the, what we can get from gain from those experiences ultimately is that there are learning processes in it, right? When you get rejected by someone, there's a reason why you got rejected. Maybe you got rejected because you were nervous and that came across in interacting with them. Maybe you got rejected because they didn't like the way you looked. Maybe you got rejected because you didn't spend enough time learning about them and building those initial steps. Uh, you know, maybe you got rejected because they had a boyfriend. There's a lot of different potential reasons. And I think the key piece you could take from that rejection is to try to really understand, huh, what did I do this time around? What can I do differently? What can I work on? Um, was it something out of my hands? Was it not? Really trying to analyze all of those steps. Look at every rejection as just the way it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, you have a puzzle that just gets broken into pieces and you're like, okay, well, how do I approach this? Well, I approach it by maybe looking for corner pieces. And once I have the corner pieces, I can start to build inward to the puzzle. So 
You know, like getting rejected may shatter that confidence or shatter that self-esteem, but you can start to rebuild it by piecing together what you can do differently next time around. As far as approaching other girls, I think you should always be in that state of mind. If your goal is to find someone that you like and to develop a relationship with them, I think a big part of that is not limiting yourself once you get rejected. It's to recognize, okay, things didn't work out with this person. We just didn't have that connection, but I may be able to develop them with other people. That's why I always highly recommend pursuing multiple people at once because it gives you the real opportunity to kind of not get so hung up and focus on one individual, but it allows you the real opportunity to kind of say, things didn't work out here. I'll go to this person. I'll try this person. I'll try that person. Um... Yeah, hey, I was just checking to see internet extender. Yeah, I mean, I have to get something that just runs down like the staircase, though. I got to figure that out. Really got to figure that out. Um, let's see. Living in 2021 says, hey, Josh, what should I do now after I had a conversation with her? More specifically, what should I talk about next and what? Uh, and when, because I don't want to just annoy her. Yeah, I think that the way that you can kind of avoid annoying her if you feel like things were awkward that time, you know, when you talked to her in the past is ultimately um, try to keep the conversation to something that um, try to keep the conversations, those interactions to things that are more casual in nature at the start until you hit on something or discover something that both of you have in common, right? So you're not constantly messaging her, constantly talking to her to try to get a conversation going. Maybe you are kind of just asking her basic things like, hey, did you do the math homework? Or, hey, did you check out that new movie that just came out? Just getting her opinion on something until you see she's excited to share something with you. When she gets to has the type of reaction where she's excited to share something with you, that's something you can lock in. But for now, just casually ask questions whenever you can just to learn more about her, to get her opinion on something, just to kind of show her that you are just trying to establish a normal communication, normal friendship at first. Uh, Jalen says, hey, Josh, what is wrong with girls telling guys that you're so sweet? Hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong inherently with telling guys that they're sweet. I think sometimes, though, if a girl says, oh, you're so sweet, it may be hard to decipher what that means, right? Are they saying it to be nice? Are they saying it because they like you? I think ultimately, ultimately with comments like that or even compliments like that, the best thing, sorry, the best thing that you can really do is to try to go deeper into building the relationship and connection with them. Try not to limit yourself to just the comment and say, well, what does that comment mean? Do they like me? Do they not like me? I, got, I have to analyze this for hours. Think to yourself, you know what? I don't really know what that comment means. Let me keep exploring a conversation with them to see if I can get more compliments from them, to see if they'll open up more to me. Those little steps are going to allow you the opportunity to really start to see like, was it just a comment or was it something more? Azim, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Zoom, Azim, Azim said, two-part question. Uh, why is it when you tell yourself to have low expectations for something, um, but then when you, when you do it, your expectations become high again, for example? Hmm. So I think that ultimately, when we talk about high and low expectations, right? when people say set a high expectation for yourself, what they may mean is this idea that, you know, um, you are going to you're going to ask out a girl and she's going to say yes like that's a high expectation because you don't know you don't know if she's going to say yes you have to talk to her get to know her better there's a lot of steps there but setting a low expectation might be hey you know what i'm going to just say hi to her and if she says hi back to me that's cool then that's a good good barometer to set i think what happens is that once our low expectations met we feel good. We feel energized. We feel like we can tackle anything. We hope then that we're going to reach that higher expectation. And sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. However, not every time we do, we do right? So I think it's, it's a matter of kind of really working the scale from low to high, not jumping to high. And a big part of that is kind of checking your own ego. So I'll give you a good example. Let's say you go somewhere and you talk to a girl and um, she flirts with you and stuff. You might feel on top of the world like, oh, yeah, man, yeah, that was cool, yeah. You know what? I could talk to any other girl that I want. That's a good sense of setting a high expectation, right? Because you're like, I feel confident, I feel ready. This is why I always recommend this. It's kind of like the, um, it's the, uh, I got to come up with a name for this technique, but ultimately it is the, like the, the, 
I don't know, the testing method. I, I don't know. I come, I'll come up with a better name. But the testing method ultimately is this. Let's say you walk into a room and there's a girl there that you want to talk to, right? She, that girl should not be the first person you approach. No. In fact, what you want to do is build up the confidence to talk to her. So you may want to turn to a random guy and say hi and have a quick conversation. And then you may want to approach another girl in the room and get the, get the, the nervousness out there. What happens is when you walk into that room, you're walking in with nervousness. And instead of putting that nervousness all in your crush, what you're going to do is start to drop it towards other people little by little until the point where you feel so comfortable because you've approached a bunch of people in the room already. Approaching your crush is no different. You're just going to go up to them like you did the 10 other people before you. So it really is that kind of build up process. I think that's how you kind of uh, work past that low and high expectation and work towards feeling more comfortable. Uh, to the second part of Azeem's question, thank you again for the $5 super chat. Azeem says, for example, Cobra Kai is filming in two hours away from me, and I went to go check it out, uh, telling myself I wouldn't see anything, but I saw the uh, the lot of uh, the, the a lot of the cast. That is so cool, man. That is freaking awesome. That's so awesome, man. Yeah, like, that's really cool. Now, I'm sure in your mind you probably thought, like, maybe they'll want me to be an extra, or maybe I can be on the show. In situations like that, sometimes you get a lucky break, right? You catch the actors, you see cool things happening. I remember um, when I used to work in in the city in Manhattan, um, I'd get off the train, and I remember they were they were filming the movie Ted Two. You know, Ted with the uh, Mark Wahlberg and the, the little teddy bear. They were filming that in Bryant Park. So when I got off the train to go to work, I see all these camera crews, and I see the the poster on the wall. It's like no parking here, filming for Ted Two. I'm like, oh, this is so cool, you know. Uh, and sometimes you just get a lucky break like that. The high expectation might be that, like I said, oh my God, maybe they're maybe they're going to want me to be on the show. But you just got to kind of think realistically with the situation. Sometimes it's good to just embrace those situations and be happy about them and just experience them as is. Uh, sometimes it's best to have no expectation and to just kind of be in the present moment and experience it. And to the third part, Azim, thank you again for the $5 super chat. Azim says, I saw William Z uh, Zabka. I saw Ralph Macchio. Oh, that's so cool, man. But security wouldn't let us get close. And I wanted to pick, but they wouldn't allow it. I don't know why. So went home. That's okay, man. Look, dude, sometimes seeing your favorite celebrity like that or a celebrity you really admire is super, super cool, dude. Um, like, it's just cool. It's really, really cool. I, I know that uh, I'll give you another example. But, dude, I want to say kudos to you man for putting yourself out there and trying to get a picture and really doing it like sometimes the best thing you can do is ask right and i think this whether it's dating whether it's talking to a celebrity whatever it's the best thing you can do is ask putting yourself out there and um putting yourself out there and just asking you don't lose much all a person can say is no and that's okay but kudos to you man for, for really really doing it um Everglow says, Azim doesn't ask questions in the chat, but always gets his questions answered because he's rich and has money to super chat. Uh, Everglow, I don't think that's what it is. I look at the super chats, like I said, as burning questions, and sometimes they're statements, right? So if a person wants to make a statement or just even donate to say thank you, they could do that. I try to grab other questions too, but I, I, I definitely want to treat the super chats like a higher priority item, um, but that doesn't mean that other people's questions are less important. It's just I try to get to them when I can. But I'll tell you a quick story. So uh, I'm a huge wrestling fan, right? And um, when I went to VidCon um, last or two years ago when VidCon was in person, um, which is like the YouTube video convention, they had a WWE panel. So I went to the WWE panel and I was sitting right behind Stephanie McMahon. Like she's sitting right in front of me talking to whoever she came with. And on the panel is Charlotte Flair. Who was there? Charlotte Flair, Xavier Woods, Triple H, Kathy Kelly, and someone else, I forgot who else was there, but I'm like sitting like 10 feet away from all these WWE superstars. That was the year I also met Becky Lynch. I took a picture with her. I went to WWE booth. Like it was just really, really cool seeing these wrestlers in person, talking to them and just observing them at that distance. So Zeme, I can totally imagine how awesome that felt for you, man. Kudos to you, dude. All right, let's get some more questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, D4 anger, danger. Maybe that's danger says, what's up, man? There's this girl in, in my school who I'm really attracted to, but she's like she's like the popular girl with lots of friends and talks to other popular boys, but I don't know how to talk to her. Good question there. So you're in a situation where you want to talk to this popular girl and she's kind of surrounded by this world of popular people. I get it. I know what that's like. It's a tricky situation to navigate, but it's possible to get there. The way that I think you kind of stand out from all the popular boys is 
you want to display a level of confidence when talking to her that she feels like you're not um, intimidated or distracted by her world. And this probably happens a lot. Guys, this happens a lot. When someone likes a popular girl, all the factors of the popular people kind of get in the way of her meeting just non non-popular people, right? Because she's just in that world all the time. So if someone were to break in, break through and communicate with her and the way that you do that, I'll share in a second. If you were to kind of break through and, and talk to her, she's going to be like, well, who's this guy? Like I've never interact with him and stuff, but he's really fun. He's really cool. He's interesting to talk to. That's the, the role you want, that you're not part of her world. You're something new. You're something different. You're something exciting. And that excitement is what's going to make you stand out. Now, the way that you come off as exciting, I think ultimately is you want to just talk to her, walk up to her and talk to her. Now, that doesn't mean ignore her friends. The best thing you can do is to also talk to her friends. Let's say she's standing in a group. You might want to approach the group and say, hey, guys, let me ask you guys a question. What do you think about this? I'm planning on going to check out this movie. I'm planning on going to do this thing. I want to get your guys' opinion. What do you think about this? And go around the group and ask their opinions. Now, it's possible the guys may you know, their machismo and this might come out and they may get intimidated. Who's this guy talking to us? But if you can strike a bit of a friendship with them and let their guard down, maybe compliment them, maybe say, oh, that's a really cool answer, man, dude, you're cool, dude. Like throw those things in. She's going to see that, hey, he gets along with my friends. He's super confident because he just walked right up to us and started talking and see, he's interesting. He's fun. He's talking about something interesting and fun. You're now establishing yourself as something different from the world that she knows. That's what makes you exciting. I think that's the direction you need to start taking. Okay. Oh, you applied to be an extra in the karate tournament? That's awesome, Azim. Good stuff, man. Uh, Josiah says, my dad met a famous wrestler. I know he became a preacher, but forgot his name. Famous wrestler that became a preacher? I'm not sure. I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't know. Uh, oh, is it Tully Blanchard? Tully Blanchard became a preacher? My grandma worked with the company for Barney. That's awesome, Jalen. That's really cool. Oh, is that why you love Barney so much? Hamish, thank you so much for the two pound super chat. Hamish said, I still need to contact that uh, that I danced with Amber. Yeah, Hamish, I remember you mentioned that last time. Um, you know, like you said you had this kind of dance with her, this interaction stuff, and you wanted to step up and talk to her. I think that's the key. Look, if you have an inter if you have an, uh, an awesome interaction with someone, try your best to stay in contact with them, guys. I know sometimes we fall into this trap of like, uh, when do I talk to them? Do I, is there a three day rule? What, you know, no. I think ultimately, if you like someone, you want to get to know them better. You want to just be interactive with their world. That might mean commenting on their post or tagging them in things or asking them questions, involving them in group chats, doing things that shows that you're active in their world, that you care about what they're sharing and about the things they're bringing forward in their lives. A lot of times when we approach someone or want to talk to someone, all we focus on is what do I say in this little me and them conversation that's going to make them like me? And what you're what you're negating is you have a whole life of funny stories and crazy experiences that are interesting to share. And guess what? That person does, too. So taking the time to open up the door where you can learn more about them is going to allow them to feel comfortable, safe, be more vulnerable with you. You have the opportunity then to flirt and joke around and show them that, wow, this is a cool person. I want to get to know them better. Let them see and learn the whole of you and do the same with them. Learn the whole of them. Uh, let's jump in and answer some more. Hamish, thank you for the two pound super chat. And I hope you hope you take that action, man. I hope you talk to her. Okay. Uh, Connor Jones says, hey, Josh, I want your word on this. How do I find a girl in this world? It's a really good, good question, Connor. Hmm, how do you go about finding a girl? Well, I think if you're at a place where you don't really know what you want in a partner, the key piece is going to be... Um, Oh, live chat and super chats delaying. It says excellent condition here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, the key piece, if you're really trying to find a partner is, or someone to date, even just casually date, the key is to ask yourself, what can, what do I want in my life right now? Do I want someone that I can build a relationship with? Am I looking just to kind of hang out with someone and have fun, just talk to every so often? Think about what you can welcome into your life that's going to make your life easier, make, going to make your life more fun, and you feel like you can handle. Sometimes people are in a place where they're dealing with a lot with school and life, and they just can't handle a relationship. Sometimes they may be in a place where they are ready to find a girlfriend or boyfriend and to commit themselves to someone. 
wherever you are, really think deeply about what it is that you want. Then once you have a better understanding of what you can welcome into your life, now it's a matter of thinking about the qualities in people that you like and what it is you want to find in a partner. Maybe you want someone that can make you laugh. Maybe you want someone that tells funny stories or has the same sense of humor as you. You know, think about those qualities because when you have an understanding of what those qualities are, it's easier now when you approach people and talk to them, you could start to say, you know what? This person, we both have the same sense of humor. I like that. That's, that's a check mark on them. That's, this is someone I want to get to know better. Start to outline the things you want to partner. And also, another piece is start to think about what you can offer in a relationship with someone else. You know, it's not just about what do I need. It's about what can I give? Can I be someone who's supportive and funny? And can I be protective? Can I be confident? Is that something I can present and put forward that they can enjoy? Those are the elements there. Think about um, what you can welcome into your life. Think about what you want in a partner and think about what you can offer a partner. I think those are the steps that you can take in terms of finding a girl in this world. Now, on a practical level, I'll just say this. That might be a girl at your school. That might be a girl at your job. That may be a girl at a a camp or a place that you, you go and hang out with your friends, someone at the mall, someone online. That where they exist can come from anywhere. But I think when you have a lockdown on what you want, it's easier than to start approaching people because you'll be able to filter out people that don't really meet those needs. And you'll be able to save yourself time in doing that. I hope that was helpful. Uh, Let's get some more questions in here. Before I bring it to a close, guys, Kickout says, uh, how old are you, Josh? I am 30. How old am I? 33? I always forget. I usually have to go to famousbirthdays.com and check my age because I always forget. I'm always like, I was born in 87? 33, I think. Okay. Uh, Everglow says, I'm 90% sure that there's only like two people in the community that like me. I I don't know about that, Everglow. I'm in the community. I'm one of those. (laughs) I like you. I think you're a fun man. I, I enjoy having you on our Instagram live streams and stuff and chatting with you. Brandon Downey says, long story short, this girl keeps looking at me. I walked past her at lunch. Um, She thought I didn't notice. I saw her in the corner of my eye, so she started looking at me. Okay, so you're exchanging eye contact back and forth with this girl. What do you do? How do you turn that into something? That's a good question. I think the way that you turn eye contact into, you turn eye contact into a connection or a communication is you want to, when next time you see her, Start to verbally communicate. And that verbal communication is going to be saying hi just at the start. Hey, how's it going? Um, Once you establish that, well, there's another piece to it. But I do want to jump in and answer Azeem's super chat when there's the fire, guys. All right. Azeem, thank you for the $10 super chat. That's a crazy amount of money. Thank you so much, Azeem. Azeem says, I understand celebrities are famous for their roles and wealth. Uh, Still, why why are they treated more highly than regular people? Even actors from from CK who are mega uh, Cobra Kai who are mega celebrities had so much security around them. Yeah, I mean, look, Azim, um, I think that it, it's not so much that people are treated like all right. When you say treated more highly than regular people, I think ultimately the reason why that may be is because. Um, when they're filming a show, they want that protection. Sometimes people want to get involved in a show, right? People will run on, run on camera or do these things. And then sometimes it's like, you don't know. Sometimes people create these kind of, uh, um, parasocial relationships with celebrities where they feel like they know that celebrity and their friends. So it's, it's always best to have protection if you're someone that's doing something public like that and you're a public figure, right? As you get bigger and more well-known, you probably will have more security. It isn't to say that you're a better person, it, but it is just to say that um, because you're more well-known, it's possible that people may be looking for you or following you or, or, you know, kind of dive into your personal life. And the thing is, security is meant there to protect the privacy and the individuality of those celebrities, right? At the end of the day, those celebrities are people and they just want to kind of live normal lives uh, to, you know, as much as they can. But I think, Ultimately, that's kind of the purpose of security there. Uh, I would I, I wouldn't look at it like I wouldn't look at it like, oh, they're better than anyone else or they're cooler than anyone else. It's just they have security there to protect them. And the protection is kind of the main key piece. Hope that's helpful, Azim. Um, but back in there. So you make eye contact with this girl. You say, hey, that's simple, right? OK, hey, hey, how's it going? Lead in with a question. 
Leading in with a question is going to be the easiest way to get an actual response from her. I'm not saying walk up to her and be like, hey, what's cooking good looking? Don't do that. Instead, say, hey, um, I noticed you around before. I don't think we've ever spoken, but now that I have you, let me get your opinion on something. Now what you've done is you've prompted a scenario where that girl can share something about herself. Uh, maybe you want to say something like, hey, you know what? Um, I was having a debate with my friend about what the best cereal is. And we cannot agree, but I need to, let me get your opinion on what do you think is the best morning cereal to eat? I like Frosted Flakes. I like, uh, I don't know, Fruity Pebbles, anything, right? I, I like, uh, I don't know, Cheerios. Uh, jump in and, and share that, right? Ask a question because now that girl's going to, what you've done is this. It's like when you're just making eye contact, there's this uh, hazy kind of, um, there's this hazy kind of um, mist, I guess, for a lack of a better term, that exists between you two. And what you're doing by talking to her is you're blowing away the mist. And now there's a direct path to them, right? There's this barrier that exists when you don't talk to them, but you're just looking at them. The tension is there. Both of you are waiting. Are they going to talk to me? Am I going to talk to them? No one knows what the next step is. But now that you've talked to her and you've asked her a question, you've broken that, that barrier and you've created an opportunity for her to give an answer. And look, Asking, I just gave a simple example of what's your favorite cereal. Most of us have a favorite cereal or a cereal that we like. So that's a simple enough question that she can give an answer to. And you can just be like, oh, that's cool. You love honeycomb? High five. That's awesome, dude. I love honeycomb too. You're, you're pretty cool. I'm going to talk to you more often. And then that's it. You walk away. What you've done is you've connected over something. In fact, we'll do a chat poll right now. What's your favorite cereal, guys? Drop it in the chat right now. I'm curious to hear what you guys like to eat. Um, jump in, in there and, and, and answer your favorite cereal. But what you've done there is just ultimately create a scenario where um, that person can now talk to you and you can talk to them and it's not going to be awkward and weird. All right, I'm going to answer one more question. We're at 47 likes. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up, let's get to 50 likes, guys. Um, I'm going to let you guys know after I answer this one question, last question here, I'm going to jump on over to, hold on, let me pull it up, Instagram, because this is not the end, guys. I continue these live streams over on Instagram for our Instagram after party. The after party pretty much is a cool event where I jump on live stream on Instagram and I invite you guys on to video chat. So if you want to jump on video chat or you want to just type in text your questions there on Instagram live, you could do that too. Follow me live over on Instagram at the Josh speaks. If you're not already, um, and you know, head on over there after, after this live stream guys, we'll get to one more question. I'm looking to see what your guys favorite cereal is. Let's see. What's up sugar pop. <laughs> yeah. Don't say things like that. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, let's see. Where's the cereal guys. Let's see. Uh, crunchy nut. Hamish says crunchy nut. Uh, rage says mine is frosted flakes. Let's see. C Cinnamon toast crunch by far farthest degree. Interesting. Interesting. I'm incredibly boring. I eat a granola cereal guys. So I love granola. So I eat granola cereal. <laughs> is the Instagram after party participation only for patrons donate donators? No, absolutely not, Stanley. It's open to anyone. The after party is for any I always let you guys know here on the live stream because I want you guys to be the first to join the Instagram after party and the very first people to jump on and hit the little video request button because then I'll bring you on. Uh, but yeah, Instagram after party is free and open to anyone and stuff. These live streams I do over here on YouTube and then Instagram and then even on our Discord after um, are all free and open to everyone. Um, it's just my way to catch up with you guys, answer questions in chat. So when I jump over on Instagram, I'll be sure to answer your questions there too. Let's see. Lucky Charms. We got Cocoa Krispies, Honey Nut Cheerios. Man, I remember all, eating all of those. I don't eat any of those main cereals anymore. Uh, a lot of them are non-vegan, but um, even the ones that are, most of them are. Um, I just don't really eat them anymore. But I do remember going to Costco and buying the box that had like the three bags, Lucky Charms, Corn Pops, and like something else. Apple Jacks maybe in there. Apple Jacks. Yeah, yeah. Granola is pretty good. I know, right? Who, where's my granola crew at? Granola people in the house. Okay, let's get one more question in. If you have a question that's you need to, be, you need me to answer right now. Jump in and ask it in the chat. I'll answer before I head on over to YouTube uh, to Instagram. Hold on a second.
one of my friends is asking about the Instagram after party. She wanted to jump on, uh, in case you guys don't know, she, well, you'll see when she, she, I bring her on. She's, uh, she's, she, she's an Instagram influencer. I consider her that. And she has a really cool account, a food account over there. She runs. So I'll bring her on there. Okay. Let me grab one more question in here and let's see what we got. Storm A. Scoville says, how do you make more friends? When I try to, when I try, they only talk to me when they need something or ben- or it benefits them. That's a really, really good question. And I'm glad that we're, we're going to, um, ended on that one there. How do you make more friends? And when I say make more friends, I don't mean have more people you can just casually talk to. I mean, have deep quality friendships, people that you really, really connect with and have your back. How do you build those type of friendships? Well, the first part is it's easy to build the kind of like, Hey, we're both in class together. Hey, Egan Blanchard, vegan too. Awesome, dude. Um, it's easy to build those type of friendships because all you need really is a common experience. You're both in class together. You're both doing an activity together. You volunteer together. Some You're in camp together. Some type of shared experience can allow you to build those kind of first level friendships, right? Where it's like, hey, we're both going through this. Let's talk. To build the deeper level friendships, you have to kind of create a space where you allow people to be vulnerable with you. Now, the way that you do that is... As you talk to people, really try to learn more about who they are, right? Let them see that you're curious about their lives. You want to learn about their experiences, learn about what they enjoy, learn about what makes them happy or sad, learn about the relationships they've had and the hardships. Creating the space where you can ask people those questions and not everyone's going to open up from the beginning. That's true. I'm not saying here like everyone's going to word vomit on you, but um, checking in with people saying, Hey, how's everything going, man? I remember last week you mentioned that you had a a really stressful week. How's everything going? Having those kind of check-ins with people allows them to see that they can start to let their guard down. When people start to feel like there's someone out there that cares about them and cares about their well-being, they're way more likely to be open. They're way more likely to be vulnerable, way more likely to be trusting and way more likely to value the friendship with them. Now, how do you offer that openness to someone where they don't take advantage of you. Well, it's important to always, no matter how close the friend is, to always set boundaries. And those boundaries tend to be, they should be built on what you feel is within your power, within your reach of what you're capable of capable of doing that isn't going to make you feel bad if you say no. That's the boundary there. So if someone says, hey, can you do this thing for me? And you say to yourself, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't want to say no because they're going to be upset with me. That's where you need to set the boundary. That's where you, that's where it's so important to say, hey, look, I really can't. Uh, I'm busy that day or I won't be able to. You know, I'm sorry about that. Now, if you notice that they're upset with you because they are not being respectful or understanding your boundary, then that's not the type of person you really want to dive too much into. You want to maybe take a step back. Because their focus right now is not on building a healthy friendship. Their focus is on getting what they want. Now, I think that that's the approach you have to start taking. When people, when you notice that when you set boundaries, people are respectful of them. Those are the people that you should take time to open up more to and to create space for them to share their perspective on life and what they're going through with you. That to me is the, the, the way that you go about building real friendships. And you can do that with anyone from any surface level area, a random person from your class, someone you meet at camp, someone you meet online, you could start there. But as you start to get to know that person on a deeper level, you'll start to see, hey, you know what, this person's respectful of my time, they're respectful of the boundaries I set for myself, and they're open and honest with me. Those are going to be solid friendships that you can build on. And also, It's about sharing more with that person. When you see that that person's trustworthy, they are someone you're going to be way more likely to want to share with. So I hope that's helpful. Um, If you have more questions on, if you have more questions on building friendships and stuff, I have a bunch of videos on it that I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tag one up over here. Um, Yeah, just like Rage Master said, even if you're not part of the Discord, you're still part of the community. I consider the community to be so many different things, guys. The community is these YouTube live streams. It's the Instagram after parties. It's our community hangouts that we do every month through Patreon. It is our Discord. I think any any place where the values of kindness, compassion, and understanding are being taught and practiced, that's our community. That's the place I want to foster growth. So you don't need to be part of one or all. But just even being around <laughs> in, in any of those, I think, makes you part of our community. So, Everglow, thank you for being part of our community, man. All right, guys. 
I think you know what time it is. It is time for our mindful moment. Got my bell right here. I'm going to jump on here and I thank you guys so much for all the awesome questions. Thank you for sticking through with all the lag and stuff. I really got to get that fixed up, but thank you for sticking through with all that. Today is Earth Day and I think it's important to reflect today on the importance of nature and what nature provides for us, right? Nature can provide a sense of warmth and comfort on a nice sunny day. It can provide a beautiful scenery as the leaves change color from red to yellow to green every season. It can provide a fun place for us to run and play on grass, on dirt, on sand, in water. There are so many elements of nature that we can be appreciative of. And as the seasons change, we also see the change within ourselves as we grow year over year. So I want us to close our eyes and think deeply about what we can appreciate in nature. What is the one thing you love most about nature and the world around you? For me, I'd probably say it's the warm sun and the stillness of the trees and the leaves in the early morning when the sun is just coming up. To me, that is my favorite part of the day. So I want us to take a moment to close our eyes, think deeply about what we love and enjoy about nature, and connect with it today here on Earth Day. Let's warm up the bell. Let's warm it up. Take 10 seconds and think about it. of this live stream. This was a lot of fun. I love jumping on doing these Q&As. I think I'm going to do them pretty much every week. I'll keep it. Oh, don't tell me the stream is lagging at the end here. Son of a gun. Well, I get yeah, yeah, YouTube. No data now. It's completely out. All right, now it's good. No.